Hi everyone and welcome to a new series of videos I'm making where I'm going to look at how you answer or how you tackle multiple choice questions. Now remember multiple choice questions are only worth a mark each so it's really really important you don't spend too long on them. You've basically got an average of 80 seconds to answer each one. So because of that, it's really important you know your stuff. So you can answer the recall ones in lightning fast time, and then you can bank up some time for the trickier ones. So I reckon that's probably why students hate these things so much. Because if you're not on your A game, and let's face it, who is throughout the year, they're not going to go well. So what I'm going to do is split them into two separate groups. So each video will tackle a different group. So group one, inorganic and physical, and the other group is organic. So I hope you like the video. I hope you find it helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments section. And if you're not already subscribed, why don't you think about subscribing to the channel? As always, with any sort of exam paper based questions that I do, the link to the questions in the description of the video, and I really suggest that you try them first before you play on for the answers. Okay, so make a start. So isotopes of iodine all have 53 protons. So basically the number of neutrons plus the number of protons plus 53 has to add up to the mass number. And they all do except D. So that was the answer. Question two, I'm just showing one of the H2O ligands and the central iron two plus there. So how do these ligands attach? Well, they use their lone pair to make a coordinate bond, which is also known as date of covalent. So it's D again. Oxidation number of the manganese. So each of those potassiums is plus one oxidation number. Each of the oxygens is minus two. So to keep this thing without any overall charge, the manganese has to be plus six. So the answer was C. Question four, absolutely essential that you know your basic chemical formulae. So you can see they've all got one calcium. So percentage by mass is the MR of calcium in this case, divided by the MR of the whole thing. So we're looking for the one with the lowest MR to give the greatest percentage by mass. So if you just look at the atoms, that one's going to have the lowest MR because oxygen and hydrogen are sort of the relatively lightest ones there. So it was C again. Moving on to question five, so you're going to need to know the equation or at least the mole ratio between the calcium oxide and the hydrochloric acid. So if you've got 0.02 moles of calcium oxide, you're going to need double that for the HCl, so 0.04. Volume equals moles divided by concentration, so this volume is 0.02 decimeters cubed, which in centimeters cubed, which is what they want, that's going to be 20. So the answer was B. Question six, we need to know how many moles of neon we've got. So I'm not actually going to finish off the calculation because I can see that those numbers there are going to give me one something in the answer. So I'm multiplying Avogadro's number effectively by one something. So it's going to stay at 6.02, so it's going to be C. Question seven, we need to calculate the moles of silicon tetrachloride from the mass. So dividing that by the MR, we get 0.04997 moles. So 100%, given that it's a one-to-one -one ratio, would produce the same number of moles, but it's only a 90% yield, so we're going to multiply that by 0.9. So we've got that many moles, and then we're going to multiply that by the MR of silicon to get the mass. And it comes out at 1.26, so A was the answer. Question eight, you need to think about which chemicals are white precipitates. So in the OCR8 specification, it's silver chloride, barium sulfate, and copper one iodide. So we're just looking through these to see, have we got the ions to make any of those? And you can see it, they are in D. We've got sulfate ions there and barium two plus ions there. So D is the answer. Question nine, before I do any of the calculations, I want to rule two out straight away. Bond enthalpies are endothermic processes, so they are not options. So what I say to my students, if you are doing any calculation involving bond enthalpies, think of it as in minus out. So the enthalpy change is the energy that goes in to break the bonds in the reactants, minus the energy 
that comes out when you make the bonds in the products. So we'll put the numbers in, minus 9 equals 436 plus 151 minus x. So solving for x, we get x equals 596. So you can see that is an option, but that x is for two HI bonds being formed, so it's going to be C. Number 10, so in a concentration time graph, the gradient is equal to the rate. We're told it's zero order reaction, so the rate has to stay constant. So D can't be right, B can't be right, because the gradient's changing in those two graphs. So the next thing we're going to do is rule out C, because the gradient of that is zero, so it would mean the rate is zero. So that one there is the answer. That's a constant gradient, constant rate, so A was the answer. Question 11, so all aqueous transition element ions react with aqueous sodium hydroxide to form precipitates. So aqueous Cr3 plus ions will form CrOH three times, but this is the one that dissolves in excess and you get substance A. Question 12, you can see next to monobasic, I've said the moles of the acid is equal to the moles of the H plus ions. First thing I need to do is work out how many moles of each acid we've got, add them together and that'll give us the total moles of H plus ions in the solution. So we're doing two lots of concentration times volume, remember volume's got to be in decimeters cubed, adding the moles together, so there's that many moles of H plus, the total volume of the solution is going to be 45 cm cubed plus 25, so that's 70 cm cubed. So the last thing we need to do is do concentration is moles divided by volume. So that's coming out at 4.07, so you can see C is 4.1, so that's the answer. Question 13, so you see I've written up there, the sum of the mole fractions has to equal 1. I've only got two gases in the mixture, so if the mole fraction of nitrogen is 0 0.7, the mole fraction of O2 has to be 0 0.3. So the partial pressure now is equal to the mole fraction times the total pressure, which comes out at 0 0.426, so the answer is B. So question 14, the cell potential is 1.14 volts. Well, let's see if it is. So it's most positive minus least, 0 0.8 minus 0 0.34. That's not going to give 1.14 volts, so that's wrong. Statement 2, the reaction at the copper electrode is that. So let's have a look at the copper electrode. It's got the least positive electrode potential. So its um, half equation would run that way. Copper going to two electrons in copper two plus. Yep, that's right. And statement three, the silver electrode increases in mass. Well, the silver electrode has the most positive electrode potential. So it will run in the forwards direction and produce silver. So yes, it will increase mass. So statements two and three were correct. C is the answer. And finally, question 15, we'll tackle in a similar way to 14. I'll just quickly explain what I've done here. So these are the symbols, obviously, for the 3D elements. I've, I've written the words weird under chromium and copper, and that's because they don't follow the pattern in the electron configuration. So you can see chromium's the fourth element in. You'd expect it to be 3D4, 4S2, but it doesn't do that because it's weird. Um, it does 3D5 for us 1. So that means configuration 1 is correct. Copper, another weird one. So you'd expect it to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 3D9 for S2. But it's not because it's weird. It's um, 3D10 for S1, which is correct. And finally, iron, so it's the sixth one in. It's not a weird one, so it's 3D6 for S2 for the atom. But when the transition elements um, form the ions, they lose their 4S electrons first. And so iron 2 plus will lose those 4S2 electrons. So it would be 3D6. So that's wrong. So the answer was B. So that's it. That's the first one of those done. I hope it was helpful. I hope it wasn't too fast. Any comments, please pop in the comments section below. Next one I'll do, it'll be an organic one. And if, you, if you'd like me to make more, I certainly will do. But please let me know. Cheers. Bye.